there's this guy out there, Scotty Kilmer, who's a mechanic. He's kind of a funny older guy that just talks a lot about cars. And I guess for a few years running now, he's been spouting out these really kind of negative stuff about EVs. And so someone sent this to me uh, as sort of the pro EV guy on YouTube to see what I think about it and react to it. So his latest video is a month old. It's about the media lying to you about electric cars. Here's the truth. Well, we're gonna look at that video today and find out whether or not he's being truthful in his video. Let's dive in. There's a lot of myths about electric cars out there. That's true, there are a lot of myths about electric cars. So today I'm gonna tell you the truth about electric cars. I don't build them, I don't buy them, I don't break them, but I do fix them. So, here's the absolute truth about electric vehicles. I love how kooky he is. It's, it's actually entertaining to watch. But let's say you wanna get a new one to keep the range up and change everything out. It's gonna cost you between 18 and 20 grand to do it on this BMW if you wanna use new parts. So he's talking about a battery replacement. In the video here, he has an old BMW i3. And this video was posted a month ago, okay? So I looked this up on a BMW Insights website which has information about the replacement costs. And even this is over a year old. This is uh, September of 2023 when it was posted. Now, first off, before we talk about the actual cost of replacing a BMW i3 battery, know that all electric cars have great warranties. And in fact, the EPA is going to be mandating them very soon. So the new vehicle limited warranty on a BMW i3 covers everything for four years and 50,000 miles. In the vehicle, he says that this vehicle only has 20 something thousand miles on it. Then they have a specific warranty just for the battery, which lasts eight years, 100,000 miles way beyond where this vehicle is today and way beyond probably where he could even imagine this vehicle going without having to replace the battery. He sort of has a sense of, oh man, every two, three years, these batteries are gonna die because the lead acid batteries die and that's the same thing. I think he should know better. But okay, the, the actual replacement price, according to this website here, this BMW Insights website, is $5,000 to $7,000. Now remember, this is after eight years or 100,000 miles. This isn't where he's at today, but he's stating it like it's fact, and this old car and all this stuff is just not gonna be able to handle a battery. So if you had to replace it, you could get a brand new one, which he states, at $5,000 to $7,000, not 18 to 20 grand. Sorry, Scotty, you're wrong about this one. And that brings up today's sponsor. The Secan Action Fund EV Raffle is back on, and they are one of the nonprofits that are fighting climate change, and now they're running their annual electric vehicle raffle this summer. And here are four reasons why you should check them out. The first reason is because now they're giving you two chances to win with each raffle ticket, increasing your odds. And the prizes are amazing. The first place winner will choose from a Rivian R1S, a Rivian R1T, like I'm sitting in now, a Tesla Model X Plaid, or even the Tesla Cybertruck. And the second place winner still gets the Hyundai Ioniq 5 SUV, which is actually very, very good. I highly recommend it, especially if you like more of those creature comforts that some of the more modern minimalist EVs don't offer. And by buying a ticket for the raffle, you're supporting the Secan Action Fund's work on addressing climate change. And another good reason is because the raffle is actually undersold right now, meaning that they've only sold around half of the tickets that they currently allotted, increasing your chances yet again to get one of these amazing prizes. So to enter, head over to the link down below or to evraffle.org. Tickets are over $200 and only 7,000 can be sold. Again, that's evraffle.org or check the link in the description down below. Now let's get back to the video. Shows that old Elon's kind of a scumbag. He doesn't want people getting the information to fix the cars outside of his own range of dealerships so they can rip you off when they fix the cars. Okay, so he sells this device to help troubleshoot and diagnose gas cars. And Teslas don't have OBD ports that it can plug into and give you information about it. That is true. And so, no, you cannot buy his device. And so he's really upset about that. So he attacks Elon, but then he says you must go to Tesla to get things fixed. And that's actually just not true. It used to be true, uh, but Massachusetts passed this law, this right to repair law, where they forced Tesla and everyone else to provide information and sell parts to people to fix their own devices, whether it be a phone or in this case, a vehicle. And so Tesla now has these DIY guides and you can go to service centers and buy parts to fix them. I just did this with my wife's Model Y and it was no big deal. It was hard to get a hold of the service center, 
but the DIY guide was fantastic and they sold it to me without any questions asked when I went into the service center. So again, Scotty, you're trying to shill your own product here, which, hey, no shame on you for that, but get the facts right because you're here telling the truth when you're just completely wrong or guess what? You made it up. Well, let's say you're seriously considering buying an electric car. Well, you're going to have to really install at least one of these level two chargers. So you might think, no big deal. Hey, this nice hotel charger, 455 bucks, not a bad deal, right? But find out where your power supply is and how far out you have to move it and what you have to tear apart in the house to make it work. And you'll probably find out it's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. Okay, so this is one that I've heard from a lot of different people, especially car people that have no actual clue about electric cars. He seems like he knows more than the average car journalist out there, but he's not exactly wrong, but he is sort of off on the pricing. So I found a website here which shows a study from Home Advisor showing that the EV charger install prices with everything on average is about $959 in the US. So the deal is, is that that charging unit, that level two charging unit, the uh, EVSE as it's called, uh, which is really just like a safety mechanism, it's not actually necessary. You can get a mobile charging adapter, which comes with your Tesla or Rivian or whatever for a couple hundred bucks, save a, save a little bit there. But the real cost comes into play when you have to wire that thing up because you're gonna want a high powered circuit, like a 60 amp or at least a 40 amp actual circuit in your breaker, which hopefully you have room for that in your electric panel. If in the older home, it might be an issue. But if you have to run that high gauge wire all the way over, you know, 100 feet or so, yeah, it can be kind of pricey. I know at my first house where I had a Tesla, I had to run it, I think 95 feet or 100 and something feet total. And that material alone was about 1200 bucks plus an electrician for the whole day, it was about 16, 1700 bucks after it was all said and done. And that was just a NEMA 1450 port, which is the same as you have for like an electric oven. Um, and then I used my Tesla adapter that they gave me with the car. So yes, it can be pricey, but thousands and thousands of dollars, no. It's again, just sorry, Scotty, you're, you're wrong again here. So I, it's really not looking good for him on the truth part of his title in his video here. Now, I, for one, would not charge an electric car battery inside the garage. What if it's starting on fire and burn my house down, right? That's the main reason. Big guy put the plug on the outside so he can just put the car here. If something happens, at least the house isn't going to burn down. Well, hopefully it won't. Well, what if the house catches on fire? I've actually heard this from friends and family members more than I probably should. And I think this is where the media is so smart about how they try to you know, bring you in with the sensational stuff to to really get your attention and sell you ads versus bring real facts and information. Yes, there have been fires from electric vehicles that have caused damage to homes, but actual data from the government here compiled by Auto Insurance EZ shows that electric vehicles are almost 100 times less likely to catch fire than a gas or a hybrid vehicle. So again, Scotty's trying to bring you the truth and uh, he just made it up, it turns out. You get a Tesla battery, okay? It is five times the size of this one. Well, we have specifications for both of those. A simple Google search would have helped him a lot here because he would have found that the energy content, the actual battery size of the BMW i3 is either 42.2 kilowatt hours or 37.9 kilowatt hours. And a Model S is 100 kilowatt hours. Takes five times as long to charge it up. If you plugged it in with one of those 110 volt, it would take days to charge it up fully. And even with a level two, it could easily take eight, nine hours to fully charge a Model S when you're using the 220 volt. Yes, if you were at zero miles and you had 300 mile range average, that could take quite a long time to get all the way up. On average, people don't drive that much per day. And so really on a daily basis, you only need to charge back up maybe 40 miles on a, on a long driving day. So even with a regular 120 volt outlet, that would work fine. Um, but I do absolutely recommend getting some kind of level two, whether that's just a port with a mobile connector or an actual wall connector and EVSC built in so that you can get the maximum amount of juice in a short amount of time. There's still the problem of infrastructure. Where's the electricity coming from? Where are they going to generate it? And then how are they going to transfer it here? Our electrical grid system is in disarray in this country. Our lines couldn't take all that power to blow the transformers on. It would blow the transformers up. The grid can't handle it. This country is in absolute disarray. 
I love his, he has a high entertainment value here. I'll give him that. Um, but just think about this. Forget that it's an electric car. An electric oven has the same amount of power requirement. And so are we telling people not to put ovens in their home because of this? No, he's completely wrong about this. When it comes to home charging, you're not doing DC fast charging. So you're not going to need to upgrade your transformers and all that. It just doesn't happen. And it's actually going the opposite way now where EVs are helping to stabilize the grid. And this just happened uh, this week, actually, where Sunrun teamed up with Baltimore Gas and Electric Company, BGE, that will enable F-150 Lightnings to deliver power to the homes during peak demand. So that way the Maryland power grid will have less of a, of a, of a peak and that way it'll be easier for them to stabilize the grid. So in fact, electric cars are not going to be a hindrance to the grid. They are more likely to become a solution to the current problems that the grid or current challenges that the grids do face. And if you're in Texas and one of the millions of people that have been without power, this is a great scenario where you could imagine just plugging your F-150 Lightning in or whatever and having power to your home instead of being out because of whatever happened with the grid there. The way they stand today, not a viable thing to buy an electric car economically. You're gonna lose your shirt. Scotty, please keep your shirt on. Um, again, this is just not true because we have data to show it. So first off, the price of used EVs are now cheaper than that of gas cars. What that means is that you can buy a used EV and at the very for the sticker price, the, the monthly payment, if you finance it or the cash payment or whatever, is going to be less than a comparable gas car. Electric cars are ultra simple, and that's why they are so maintenance light. So right there, he's wrong again. And in fact, there was a study out that just came out very recently about electric cars and people saving money o over five years in different states in the U.S. And according to J.D. Power, there are only two states where that's not true. And it has to be with super cheap gas prices and super high electricity prices. Again, those are averages. But in general, you're going to be saving thousands and thousands of dollars across five years. Even if you pull up just uh, the fuel savings on specific vehicles, such as an F-150 Lightning versus an F-150 gas, from the fueleconomy.gov, which, you know, this isn't me making these numbers up, you can see that the F-150 Lightning gets 68 miles to the gallon or MPGE equivalent, and the regular gas one gets about 20 miles to the gallon. So across five years, according to fueleconomy.gov, the studies that they've done show that with the electric one, you're going to be saving $3,750. And on the gas one, you're going to be spending more than $3,750 than the average new vehicle. So that's, you know, over a $7,000 difference between the gas one to the electric one. So right there, you can see that that alone is just one example. Of course, your mileage will vary. And if you don't have an F-150 Lightning, let's say you wanted to compare a Tesla Model 3 to a Toyota Corolla, it kind of becomes even more stark of an example where the Tesla Model 3 gets 132 miles per gallon equivalent and the Toyota Corolla gets 35 miles per gallon, which is really good for a gas car. But you're gonna be saving $6,500 compared to the average new vehicle over five years. And the Corolla, you're saving money as well because it's a pretty fuel efficient vehicle. You're saving $2,000 compared to the average vehicle with a $4,500 gap between them. So Scotty, unfortunately you're wrong again. And I really wish that you would get off this horse that you're on because you are just beating it to death. And it's one of those things where reality is just forcing you into smaller and smaller kind of niches and ways of kind of slicing and dicing the data to, to make your point. I saw a bunch of other videos he did before doing this one, and it's all the same story. It's not that electric vehicles are just perfect in every possible way. They have their challenges. I've talked about them on this channel. I've talked about my own personal experiences, but I'd like to know what you have to say about this. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see what it's actually like living with an electric vehicle, like the R1T that I'm in right now, check this video over here. Where I posted my two-year update just recently. That's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.